12 verse 11. Because now, this is the time for you so-called black and Hispanic. It's time for you to listen to God's words. Come on, read. Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. Read. And that, knowing the time. It's high time. This is the perfect time. You've been going through these things all your life. Come on. And now, it is high time to wake out of sleep. You've been sleeping for far so long. You're 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. You're still doing the same thing over and over again. But you're expecting different results. Come on. For now is our salvation nearer than we believe. Look at the Bible. These prophecies are starting to unfold. Day in and day out. Our salvation is closer than where we believe. But yet and still, we listen to wicked nations. We listen to wicked people. Right. Give me Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 4. Bring it out. We listen, we listen to so-called white men. The so-called Arabs. Right. The so-called Chinese. Right. The so-called Japanese. Right. We listen to their philosophies. Yeah. We've been doing this for far so long. Come on. Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 4. Great. Therefore, the law is slack. It says the law is slack. The God's laws, it is slack. It has weakened. Why? Come on. And judgment does never go forward. Judgment is not going forth in our nation. Right. The so-called black suspense and Native Americans, we do not do judgment according to God's laws. We do what the other nations state to do. we rather keep their laws rather than keep our own laws. Right. Come up. These are holy and righteous laws that the Lord has given us. Right. But what is saying? Read it again from the top. Therefore, the law is slack. No, we don't want to keep God's law, so therefore, the law is slack in our communities. Now you see the curses that are coming about. We're living in the slums and the ghettos. You have black on black crime. Right. Come on. And judgment does never go forth. Come on. For the wicked does compass about the righteous. It says the wicked. We have to, we have to look at who is the wicked. Because we read that throughout the whole Bible. The wicked, the wicked. But we never identified who the wicked is. Let's see, give me Malachi. The book of Malachi chapter one and verse four. The Bible is always going to defend itself. The Bible is always going to define itself. Read. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished. But read it from verse one. The book of Malachi chapter one and verse one. Because we gotta get the context of the scriptures, come on. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Uh huh. I have loved you, saith the Lord. God said he has loved the children of Israel. Right. Come on. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Like we look at where we condition, we look at the slums and the ghettos, and we look at the Lord and say, where have you loved us? We're getting shot down in the streets. We are on the bottom of all nations. Come on. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? God is saying, was not Jacob Esau's brother? Come on. Say that the Lord, uh -huh. yet I love Jacob. But he says, I have loved Jacob. Jacob's name was changed into Israel. That's why we, we call the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. That was our forefather, Jacob. Come on. And I hated Esau. What did he say? And I hated Esau. No, nah, he loved Esau. And I hated Esau. So therefore, I let you know that God hates. Right. That's right. God hates Esau. Let's go and let's go further in regards to what Esau is. Come on. And laid his mountain and his heritage to waste. He said dragons. he laid his mountains, his cities, and his heritage to waste for destruction. Come on. For the dragons of the wilderness. Uh-huh. Where Edom saith, we are in poverty. But this is what Edom has stated. They said, yeah, we're poor right now. Yeah, we're impoverished. We're in a low state, but come on. But we will return and build the desolate places. But he says, look, we want to build the desolate places. Wherever the places that we haven't been, we're going to be there and we're going to build them up. Yeah. Now you see Esau is ruling all over the world. They have their hand in every single country. Right. Come on. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. They shall build. They say, Esau has stated, we will build. But what? But I will throw down. But God says, I'm going to throw down. That lets you know that that's one of the characteristics of the Lord. He's a black man. That's what we say in our communities. Right. We're about to throw down when something is about to happen. Same thing with the Lord. He said, I'm about to throw down. And when he does touch ground, he's going to cause destruction. All buildings that you want to see right now, it's going to be melted with fervent heat. Right. Right. Come on. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. It says, who does Esau is? The border of wickedness. It says they are the border of wickedness. They are the beginning and the end of wickedness. Right. Go back to Habakkuk. 
So we've already defined who the wicked is. That is talking about. It's talking about the so-called white man. It is not just talking about the white man because the white man has his hand in other nations as well. They come along with the philosophies of the so-called white man. Right. He's just the ringleader of the wickedness. Come on. Go back back to chapter four. one and verse four. Great. Therefore the law is slack, uh -huh. and judgment does never go forth. And judgment never goes forth, come on. For the wicked does compass the righteous. It says the wicked has compassed the righteous. The wicked has excelled the righteous. We are supposed to be the righteous ones. Right. We'll be keeping God's law, statute, and commandments. Hold that, give me what righteousness is. Bring it up. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Because we have to label what is righteousness. Because the Christian church always says, well, I'm righteous. I'm righteous. Let's see what righteousness is. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. Great. And it shall be our righteousness. It says it shall be our righteousness. You want to see what righteousness is? Come on. If we observe to do all these commandments. It says if we observe to do all the commandments. So therefore it lets you know that the laws are not done away with. Right. In order for you to be righteous, you have to be keeping the commandments of God. That's right. Come on. Before the Lord our God. Uh-huh. And he has commanded us. As he has commanded us from times past even until now. But hold on, that's the Old Testament. Let's see what it says in the New Testament. Right. Give me Luke chapter one, verse six. Because we're gonna show you it said the same thing in the Old Testament as it does in the New Testament. Come on. The book of Luke chapter one and verse six. Read verse five. Verse five. Come on. There was in the day of Herod. So there was in the days of Herod. This was a Roman. He was ruling over Jerusalem. Come on. The king of Judea, uh -huh. a certain priest named Zacharias, of well, the course of Habat. So this priest, it will be a so-called Haitian today. This is a, a Levite. This is a Levitical priest right here. Come on. And his wife, and his wife was of the daughter of Aaron. So this was Zachariah, and his wife was also from the tribe of Levi. Come on. And her name was Elizabeth. Her name was Elizabeth. Read on. Verse 6. Read. And they were both righteous before God. They said they were both Righteous before God. Come on. Walking in all the commandments of the Lord. Of, so, I'm sorry. Really walking good. in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. So therefore, if you're going to walk in the statutes, commandments of God, you're going to be found blameless and righteous. Right. Go back to Habakkuk. Habakkuk, chapter 1 and verse 4. Come on. Therefore, the law is slack. It says the law is slack. Read on. And judgment does never go forth. Right. For the wicked does compass the righteous. So the wicked, those that are not keeping God's laws, those that are always committing sin, are surpassing those that are not following, that are keeping God's laws. Right. Why? Because there's not enough of us keeping God's laws. Right. Our people refuse to keep God's laws. Right. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29. Right. And then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, uh -huh. We ought to obey God rather than men. It says we're not supposed to obey God. Uh, we're supposed to be keeping God's law, statute, commandments right. rather than obeying what man says. Right. Because man is wicked. Their heart is very deceitful. Right, right. It says we are supposed to obey God's laws. God gave the laws to us, right. so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He gave his laws to the children of Israel. Therefore, right. we must be practicing day in and day out. But yet still, we sleep. We walk around here mindless. We don't have our right mind on our shoulders. Right. Go back. Go back to, uh, I'm sorry, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 5. Because we have to establish what the wicked is. We have to establish what they're doing. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 10 and verse 5. Yes. Then there, there is an evil which I have seen under the sun. Solomon is saying there's an evil that I've seen up under the sun. So this is Solomon prophesying. This is thousands and thousands of years ago. King Solomon is letting us know through the word. Come on. As an error. Read it from the top again. There, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 5. Come on. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, uh -huh. as an error which proceeded from the ruler. It says this is an error that has proceeded from the ruler. Come on. Folly is set in great dignity. It says folly, foolishness, has been set upon great dignity. Foolishness has been set above very high. Foolishness has been above top of everything. Right. Come on. And the rich sitteth in low place. It says in the rich. Who are the rich? Hold that, give me revelations. We're gonna see who the rich is. Bring it up. 
Because a lot of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, you do not believe that you are rich. But you are. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. Great. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. So Christ is saying, look, I know your works. I know the things that you're going through. I know your poverty. I know you're getting shot down in the streets. I know these you living in the slums and the ghettos. I know you're getting a low pay job. I know the tribulation. I know the slavery that you're going through right now. Come on. But thou art rich. But he says, what? Thou art rich. But he says, look, you're rich. The whole world was given to you. The whole world was made for you, Israel. You are the rich ones. Right. Come on. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. He, he said he knows the lies of those that say that they, they are Jews. Those Jews, so-called Jews, that's living in Israel right now. They're lying. They're not the real Jews. Come on. And are not. But they're what? And are not. They're not the real Jews. You are the real Jews. Right. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Stop calling yourself by a fiber. You are the children of Israel. You are God's chosen people. You are his sons. You are his daughters. Come on. Them which say they are Jews and are not. Uh -huh. But are the synagogue of Satan. But they are what? The synagogue of Satan. The Jewish are the synagogues of Satan. Right. You are the rich ones. Right. Go back to where you was at. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 6. Come on. Finally is set in great dignity. Come on. And the rich sit in low places. So the rich, the children of Israel are now sitting in low places. Right. They're sitting in the slums, the ghettos. You're on the bottom of the barrel. Right. Come on. I have seen servants upon horses. Look what you're doing. You've become so low as a people. You have your servants ruling over you. When you sit on a horse, that means a sense of power, a sense of dignity. You've gone down so low. Now you have your servants. The servants are the so-called white men. Right. The so-called Arabs, the so-called Chinese, the so-called Arabs, right. the Japanese. Right. Those are supposed to be your servants. But now your servants have run amok. Your servants are now ruling over you. Right. They're sitting in power. They're sitting in the power seats. Come on. And princes walking as servants upon the earth. And now the princes. We are the princes. The children of Israel. We are now the servants upon the earth. From captivity to captivity, right. from slavery to slavery, from modern times, 1492, even up until now, we have been in slavery from these other nations. Come on. He, verse 8. Let me read that verse 7 again. Verse 7. I have seen servants upon horses. Now the service is now ruling over you. Now they, now the law has become slack. Now judgment is no longer going forth. Because your servants don't have the mentality of what God is telling you to do. Right. God is telling you to keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. But your enemies don't care about God's laws. Therefore, the law is now slack. And there's no judgment that's gone upon the face of the earth. Come on. I have seen servants upon horses uh -huh. and princes walking as servants upon the earth. And now the curses have poured upon us. And now we are now the servants. To our servants. That is now a lower state that we're in. This says the law is slack. Give me uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. It says the law is now slack. For the past 50 years, 50, 60 years, they made an abortion law. Where it's saying it was legal for you to commit murder. It was legal for you to commit murder from your own seed. It's abortion. Your abortion means, the root word of abortion, it means to cancel. You're canceling your own child. From life. Wake him up. Come on, give me that. Verse 13. Come on. Thou shalt not kill. It says what? Thou shalt not kill. God saying, Thou shalt not kill. Right. Thou shalt not murder. Right. But yet and still, you get upset when the government says you're no longer allowed to kill your baby. You're no longer allowed to kill murder. You're no longer allowed to murder your seed. You get upset by that. What did, what, what did God say? Thou shalt not kill. God says thou shalt not kill. You say you live by the Ten Commandments. Won't you try keeping that law? Right. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not kill. But you say that no, it's a fetus. I can do whatever I want. It's my body. Give me wisdom of Solomon chapter 15 verse 8. That's what you say. It's my body. It's my choice. Well, 
You have four rude awakening. It is not your body. Right. It is God's body. Yes, You're just right. borrowing it. Come on. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15 and verse 8. Read. And employing his laborers lewdly, he make a vain god uh -huh. of the same clay. So you you worshiping idols with the same clay. Come on. Even he which is a little before it was made of earth himself. Because you was made from earth yourself. But you're worshiping these clay idols. You're worshiping wood and stone. It's nothing but, nothing but tree and clay. Come on. And within a little while, after returning to the same. And you return the same way you was created, because we all came from Adam. He was created from the dust of the ground. And the same way Adam was created from the dust of the ground, when you die, you're going to go right back into that dirt. Right. Come on. Out of the wish he was taken, uh -huh. while his life which was lent him. Oh, 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 which is what? When his life which was lent him. Your life is lent to you. Right, you are right, borrowing right. that life. Right. So out. therefore, you're going to have a judgment if you do not follow God's laws correctly. Because there's going to be payback for what you did in this body. Come on. When his life which was lent him shall be demanded. Because when your life is demanded by God, you want to stand right in front of him. And he's going to ask you, what did you do, my son? Right. What did you do, my daughter, right. with the body that I gave you? Right. And you're going to get judged by that, right. according to your work. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.